October 12th, 2014. Room 1708, Sheila Hotel, Seoul. A CEO of a Fortune 200 defense contractor slumps into the leather desk chair, exhausted from a 14-hour flight. He boots his laptop, connects to the hotel Wi-Fi, and presses refresh on his inbox. A notification appears instantly. Your Adobe Flash Player is out of date. Click here to update. He sighs, clicks. The update installs in less than a second. The dialogue closes. Nothing else happens. He takes a sip of whiskey, completely unaware that the next 80 seconds will mark the end of his privacy, his company's security, and the safety of people who depend on his decisions. What he doesn't know is that the hotel Wi-Fi he connected to isn't just Wi-Fi. It's a sniper rifle, and he just walked into the crosshairs. A silent executable has burrowed into his system, scraping every keystroke, vacuuming sensitive documents, siphoning encryption keys, and copying his email archive in the background, then transmitting it halfway across the world to a server that has never once appeared in a criminal marketplace. And here's the part nobody realizes yet. He isn't the first. He isn't the tenth. He's victim number 9004. For a decade, an invisible cyber espionage group has targeted the world's richest, most powerful, and most influential travelers, not at their offices, not in their homes, but inside their hotel rooms. The attackers have a name whispered only in intelligence circles and buried inside classified threat briefings. Dark Hotel. But who are they? How do they infiltrate hotel networks without leaving a trace? And why haven't they ever sold a single byte of stolen data? To answer that, we need to go back to the moment Dark Hotel silently stepped into the hospitality industry and stayed for 10 years. May 21st, 2007, inside the Grand Pacific Tokyo Hotel, Tokyo. An IT administrator named Masato finishes his usual end of shift routine, check server utilization, review guest Wi-Fi logs, scan for malware, clear old DHCP leases. He's been doing this for five years. Nothing ever surprises him. Tonight, one line item stands out, a system process he's never seen before, hdvclientcache.exe. He opens it. It looks like a generic driver component, nothing suspicious, no alerts, no performance spikes. He moves on. That decision will haunt an entire industry because that file isn't harmless. It's the first confirmed foothold of a cyber espionage campaign that will eventually compromise 10,000 high-value executives, dozens of diplomats, and multiple government officials. The file is a loader, a digital skeleton key, a backdoor that creates a permanent invisible entry point into the hotel's internal network. It's the equivalent of a burglar slipping into your house during a dinner party, memorizing the layout, copying the keys, and leaving without moving a single object. You don't notice anything missing, because nothing is missing. Not yet. The attackers never act immediately, never act loudly, never act carelessly. For the first 72 hours, they observe. They map. Which devices connect? which rooms host VIPs, which MAC addresses belong to returning executives, which conference attendees log in late at night, which ports the hotel routers leave open, which internal update servers can be hijacked. Dark Hotel is patient, methodical, clinical. They are not after the masses, they are after the elite. By September 2007, the attackers deploy their initial masterpiece, a trojanized software update hosted on the hotel's own network. Only devices belonging to specific guests trigger the update. Everyone else sees nothing. Imagine a security camera that only records when one exact person walks by. That's Dark Hotel's selectivity. The first publicly confirmed victim? a senior Japanese technology executive preparing for a meeting on semiconductor IP. His laptop downloads a forged Google toolbar update. 
he clicks, it installs, the malware activates, his company's roadmap for the next five years is silently copied and sent to a server offshore. Nobody notices, not him, not his company, not the hotel. People assume hotel Wi-Fi is simply slow, annoying, or unreliable. What they don't realize is that hotel networks are outdated, undersecured, managed by external contractors. Filled with legacy equipment, running unpatched routers, built on flat, poorly segmented architectures, they are not designed to protect secrets. They are designed to get business travelers online fast. And Dark Hotel knows this better than anyone else. They aren't breaking into laptops, they're breaking into infrastructure. Once inside, they hijack update servers, modify captive portals, replace legitimate installers with malicious ones, inject payloads into the Wi-Fi login page, spoof certificates, create fake patches, install keystroke harvesters that vanish after extraction. It's not hacking, it's surgical espionage disguised as convenience. By 2011, Dark Hotel deploys its most infamous tools. Keylogger.f logs keystrokes, erases itself after extraction. Tspy.win scans for documents, archives them as media files. Backdoor.e creates a persistent channel disguised as hotel network traffic. Signed malicious binaries stolen from legitimate companies. Torrent-based data exfiltration disguised as video streaming. Each is more sophisticated than the last, but the signature move remains the same, the forged update. Flash Player, Chrome, Windows Defender, Adobe Reader, Browser Plugins. A CEO connects to hotel Wi-Fi and sees a pop-up. He clicks, and that single click determines the fate of a multi-billion dollar corporation. By late 2011, investigators will later estimate more than 3,000 executives have been compromised. Victims include CEOs of biotech companies, defense contractors, private equity partners, aerospace engineering directors, chemical manufacturing board members, diplomats traveling between summits, crypto pioneers, a high-ranking individual from a NATO advisory group, but here's what makes Dark Hotel different from every other cyber enemy. They wipe the infection the same day the target checks out. No persistence, no leftover evidence, nothing to analyze. It's like breaking into a house, burglarizing it, cleaning every surface, vacuuming the carpet, locking the windows, restoring the security system, and placing the keys exactly where they were. Victims leave without ever knowing their privacy was murdered. Victims are chosen based on corporate role, nationality, travel patterns, hotel preference, conference attendance, meeting schedules, industry sector, influence level. During an operation targeting a Japanese industrial executive, a malware component fails to delete its temporary files. A forensic trail is left behind, not enough to identify individuals, but enough to link the attack to a geographic region and a set of operational patterns. Investigators quietly inform allied intelligence agencies. The findings are explosive. Dark Hotel's infrastructure overlaps with nation-state level tools, government telecom intercept points, espionage-related IP blocks, regional language coding styles, military-grade cryptography choices. The implication is clear. Dark Hotel is not an amateur group. Dark Hotel is not a criminal gang. Dark Hotel is not after credit cards. Dark Hotel is an intelligence operation. Which nation? Analysts disagree. Classified reports differ. Public statements remain vague by design. But everyone agrees on one thing. Dark Hotel's access to hotel infrastructure is far beyond what amateurs could achieve. Hotel executives scramble emergency security audits, massive router replacements, 24-7 incident response teams, millions spent on upgrades. But the truth is devastating. The infections weren't inside guest devices. They were inside the hotel, in the routers, 
in the firmware, in the internal update servers, in the captive portal systems, in the ISP hardware upstream, in the authentication certificates. An industry built on convenience is forced to confront the cost of neglect. Executives begin asking questions like, how long has this been happening? Which hotels were compromised? Who was targeted? What did they take? Why didn't we detect anything? CEOs around the world begin reviewing their travel histories, cross-referencing meetings, looking for coincidences, trying to determine when the breach happened. A European aerospace executive learns he was targeted during a conference in Busan. A biotech founder discovers she was compromised the week she pitched her cancer therapy. A private equity partner realizes the malware hit the night before a billion-dollar acquisition. A defense contractor VP is informed the breach occurred during a NATO summit. Every revelation feels like a gut punch. Because Dark Hotel didn't just steal files, they stole trajectories, future decisions, corporate DNA, negotiation leverage, secrets that shape entire industries. One CEO summed it up bluntly. They didn't hack my laptop, they hacked my life. When everyday people get hacked, they call their bank. When CEOs get hacked, governments get involved. Behind closed doors, the fallout is catastrophic. Emergency intelligence briefings, private cybersecurity summits, quiet diplomatic pressure, classified counterintelligence investigations, defense sector panic, silent resignations, entire merger strategies rewritten. The world's most powerful people are suddenly forced to accept something they never imagined. Their secrets weren't stolen by criminals. Their secrets were collected by professionals. When analysts reconstruct the attacks, a pattern emerges. Dark Hotel wasn't stealing data. They were building profiles, influence maps, political leverage charts, corporate negotiation playbooks, travel pattern analytics, relationship webs, long-term vulnerability dossiers. A database of how the world's elite move, think, negotiate, invest, and influence the world. Imagine a map showing every CEO's travel habits, which executives meet each other, which nations their companies depend on, which hotels they prefer, which files they carry, which conferences they attend, which mergers they're planning. That's not hacking. That's power consolidation. Hotel chains overhaul cybersecurity architectures. Some quietly replace entire networks without admitting why. Others pay millions in consulting fees. But the truth remains, hotel Wi-Fi is still vulnerable. Executives still travel. People still click updates. And attackers still evolve. Dark Hotel may have gone quiet publicly, but no expert believes they stopped. Espionage doesn't end it adapts. And the next phase might already be happening in hotels, airports, airplanes, conference centers, or anywhere the powerful gather. If you think dark hotel hacking 10,000 CEOs is terrifying, remember this. They didn't target you by accident. They targeted you because you checked into a hotel. Every journey you take, every Wi-Fi network you join, every update you trust, every conference you attend, each one becomes a data point in someone else's intelligence map. You're not just booking a room, you're entering a battlefield, and somewhere, in a building you'll never see, behind servers you'll never access, operated by people you'll never meet, since a database containing your emails, your secrets, your travel, your contacts, your deals, your future. Dark Hotel wasn't a hack. It was a warning, because the next cyber operation won't just target executives. It will target decision makers, scientists, political leaders, and anyone whose choices shape the world. And if you think this story is unsettling, wait until you see the operation where Russian hackers infiltrated the entire US government via SolarWinds, one of the most sophisticated espionage campaigns ever executed. Every federal agency compromised, every sensitive system exposed, and it all happened silently, over months, inside software everyone trusted. Click here to watch how it unfolded.